Hello, welcome to uh, SS three thirty Sustainable Manufacturing Systems. This is the lecture five, uh, inventory control. All right, so today we're gonna discuss uh, mainly topic topics related to inventory, and uh, um, so three ma major topics: what are the basics of inventory, why inventory is important and is useful, or how it functions in in the manufacturing systems, uh, and also uh, how do you categorize or select different inventory uh, control models and control systems. All right, first, uh, what is inventory? And uh, in the prior lectures, we kind of discussed a little bit about what is the inventory. Um, and we, 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 discuss, uh, we talk about that the inventory is not desired, it's, it's, it's better we do not hold inventory because holding the inventory actually, uh, uh, it prohibits you know, the flow of the, uh, of the items or flow of the parts and they will you know reduce the they will increase the cycle time uh, however inventory is is, is actually sometimes it um, is important because it will actually um, you know function as a, um, you know uh, as a risk reduction uh, function because uh, sometimes you know if there are no inventory holding or no you know extra items holding on the shop floor you know, when when the when a certain process run out of stock stocks of the raw materials it will you know it will uh, uh, it will stop producing because you know, because run out of the materials so inventory in this case will actually help uh, uh, help make, make you know make your production line flow uh, smoothly so and now let's look at what what kind of inventory do we have? We have um, raw materials, for example, when the when the raw materials still you know steel sheets or different you know woods or different you know, raw materials coming into the shop floor from another supplier. Uh, usually it's stored you know uh, uh, on the shop floor or a certain place on the shop floor. And also some of the inventories can be held as uh, purchased manufactured parts because we all source some of the parts you know, from another supplier, then uh, we probably want to hold a certain uh, type of a certain amount of inventory in order to you know, reduce the risk of running out or, or, or stocking out. And also there's our uh, inventory that can be sub-assemblies. Uh, for example, uh, we assemble parts together and to be a, uh, to be a uh, you know to be a bigger part. Um, well, uh, because you know we uh, after a certain processes, then we have assembly process, right? Um, and they will need that kind of sub assemblies. In this case, it will if we make some extra sub assemblies, it will actually help help us to smooth out the the, the production line and make it flow uh, uh, better. Um, also, uh, another type of the inventories can be the finished products. Of course, you know once we uh, uh, once we finished, you know we can hold a certain amount of inventory uh, that when order comes, we can immediately deliver uh, deliver the products. So that will uh, actually further uh, reduce the lead time. So that's uh, these are the different uh, types of inventories people can hold in uh, on the shop floor. And these are the, you can see some of the pictures and how the inventories are whole. Uh, it can be you know a, a row of sheets, steel sheets, aluminum sheets on the shop floor. It can be you know the parts. It can be uh, you know some really, really little screws or little parts, or it can be you know fin uh, finish the products you know on the shop floor in the you know in the warehouse. All right, so the purpose of inventory, uh, we kind of uh, talk a little bit about that. Uh, the one is to maintain independence of operations, uh, because if one operation is so reliable, so relied on the prior, prior process or prior operation, uh, well, in this case, if the prior operation couldn't finish on time, then what happens is, you know, uh, it will cause, you know, negative, negative impact on the, you know, uh, subsequent uh, operations. Well, if if you want to independent on that, the yeah, and still can make parts, you know, uh, produce parts, uh, when the prior operation is, you know, experiencing something, some difficulties or the or 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 delay of time. Well, in this case, you can hold a little bit of inventory and then keep moving. All right, another one is to meet the variation in product uh, demand. So. 
uh, because you know we we have the forecast, but the forecast is not not always you know accurate. So uh, um, you know also there's a probability in there. In this case, we can hold us a little bit extra uh, inventory in this case, uh, and then you know when. Uh, when the product you know increases, sorry, in, when the demand increases, we can immediately feel the demand. So that's uh, another reason. Uh, third reason is to allow flexibility in production scheduling, right? So in uh, we kind of discussed that uh, yeah when in, in production scheduling you know be uh, because when uh, when some of the parts can um, can be, are already made on the shop floor. Right, we can actually schedule certain uh, certain orders smoothly, and uh, uh, or maybe some maybe from the middle of the production line because some of the products are already made. And in this case, uh, a schedule can actually help uh, to make the make the production uh, much faster. And to provide a guideline, uh, safeguard the variation in raw material uh, delivery. If you store a little bit of raw materials on the shop floor, uh, you know if there are some of the variation in, uh, in delivery time, then we can still actually uh, use our 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 inventory to to make the production you know, during the lead time of uh, of our raw raw material order. And also, we can we can do uh, economic purchase uh, order size uh, because you know when we are purchasing uh, raw materials and um, usually the the uh, the supplier will give you actually a lower price unit price if you purchase more, right? So in this case, you know you, you can probably calculate what is uh, you know. Um, uh, what is the best price or best quantity that you want to order uh, in order to save your uh, your cost? So later we're gonna talk about that. That is actually called a EOQ model, economic order quantity. All right. So the stocks, um, pipeline stocks, cycle stocks, seasonal stocks, safety stock, um, and also some of the stocks for uh, health for some other reasons. And so. Um, those kind of stock, different types of stocks, stocks are actually different types of uh, uh, of inventories, right? So the pipeline stock means those kind of stock or inventory you hold, you know, hold the, during the processes, right? In transit in stock, and and, and a cycle stock means there's a bad production uh, owing to economics of scale and technological requirements, and then also there are some seasonal stocks. Um, you know, it, it really depends on the time, you know, varying uh, of the demand of, of a certain item or certain uh, product or parts. Uh, so safety stuff means we, we want to deal with, uh, you know, supply and demand uncertainties and also lead time uncertainties. In this, in this case, we hold a little bit extra uh, stocks or inventory um, and so to avoid uh, potential uh, impact from, uh, from delays. Uh, also, sometimes they hold a little bit stock because of the you know policy change, right? Uh, um, for example, if uh, if the you know we know that uh, if the oil uh, oil the gas uh, price go uh, is gonna go up tomorrow, then if your cars you know it's a half uh, still have half a tank, you probably want to fill the tank today, uh, and uh, so you know to uh, to avoid uh, having a higher price tomorrow. Right, so these are um these are some of the reasons that you can uh, hold stocks. All right, so for the cost of the inventories, um, holding the inventory, I'm gonna start to have the cost. Uh, but also there are some other costs that are related to the to the inventories on the materials. For example, it's a procurement cost. You purchase the goods, right? So there is a raw material cost, and also uh, there is a. Uh, um, a setup cost, right? So we, well, who gonna pro process the order and who gonna set up the order and then, and also uh, handling of the order. These are, are uh, there's some some of the costs related to that. It's called procurement cost, or or sometimes they call it setup cost. Uh, all right, and also there's a certain cost related to uh to to the holding it. Uh, uh, for example, for example, uh, when it, especially if you are producing some of the uh, products that is that related to refrigeration or certain uh, temperature or environment, 
uh, even space, right? You are still investing a certain amount of money that to hold the part of, hold the parts. Uh, so this uh, the, this is why that uh, you do not want to hold a lot of products or, or inventory on the shop floor. Otherwise, it will you know uh, either you lose the opportunity cost or you are spending more money to just to hold those uh, that is not flowing on your on your shop floor. And also, there's a short shortage cost, so which means that you know if you hold the cost a lot, uh, ho- sorry, if you hold the inventory a lot, means you're actually losing some of the opportunities to make more money, right? Uh, or you probably gonna experience some uh, lateness penalties due to stock out or a back order. Right? When uh, sorry, when when you have a shortage of the cost. You you gonna have that. Well, we we don't have hold. If you hold the uh hold the inventories or the stock a lot, it means that you you lose the opportunity to uh, you know to uh, uh, to use the space or use that you know money in order to make more profit. So that's uh, both a shortage and uh, over uh, overholding of the costs. All right. Next, let's look at uh, the different uh, um, how to classify those kind of uh, inventories. Uh, you know, especially related to the parts on the shop floor. And then one principle is called the Pareto principle. So Pareto principle means that very few are actually having the greatest importance, and many actually having little importance. Uh, this is very. Uh, <coughs> uh, this is very common in uh, in. Almost every aspect, you know, especially you know when we're talking about the wealth, for example, when uh, we are looking at the U.S. wealth, um, actually top twenty percent is uh, they are holding over seventy five percent of the total wealth, uh, compared to you know middle class and the bottom class, um, and um, now actually in the middle class actually holds less than well, uh, less wealth than top one percent of the people, right? So, so this is one example of the Pareto principle in the production system. It's the same. Uh, so the, the very few parts of the products actually have are 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 very crucial or most important to uh, to uh, to a to a final product or or to the inventory control, right? Uh, for example, you know, if it is the airplane, then probably it is the engine or some other, you know, key important parts controls. And uh, if it is your phone, maybe the screen and, and the board are are are, are you know our chips are pretty important. Um, and and you can tell that you know, uh, uh, but you know, for these part products, actually there are, especially for airplane, maybe tens of thousands of uh, 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 parts out there. All right. Uh, another type of classification is ABC classification. Uh, th- this is based on the dollar volume. Um, you can categorize them at high dollar volume, moderate dollar volume, and also low dollar volume. Or another type of the classification will be via VED, which is vital, essential, desirable. Uh, depends on how do you want to want to you know define your uh, your vital, essential, and desirable of that. Um, uh, another type will be uh, FSN with the fast moving, slow moving, and non moving. So the fast moving with that, you know, it it changes all the time, and it, 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 it the part of the parts are are being used very 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 fast, right? And also deep, uh, goes goes down really fast, and then you have to refill it really fast. So this is one, uh, one type of uh, uh classification you can use to. Uh, 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 to control your inventory system. Uh, this is one example of the Pareto uh, uh, principle that you can tell uh, these are all the all the item numbers and you can see the dollar you know dollar volume or dollar dollar usage with, with, with each of the parts. These are part types, right? Uh, item numbers. And you can see 22 is uh, 95,000, and six, uh, uh, item t- 68 is uh, 75,000, and all the rest are pretty uh, low dollar volume, 
right? So in this case, um, yeah, we can categorize uh, you know twenty two one sixty eight actually into the first class uh, classification, which is A. Uh, you can see it actually composes about forty forty point sixty nine plus thirty two point thirteen. So it makes about seventy two point nine percent. So only two product two parts actually make make up seventy two point nine percent of all the uh, you know annual dollar usage of all the inventories, and, and then similar uh, similarly you can categorize the rest of those. Uh, actually, you can easily tell uh, these are twenty seven uh, zero three and uh, eighty two. These are the second, um, uh, second, uh, second classification, right? Or second, uh, second level, and the rest of those will be third level, and the second level will be twenty two point seven, and uh, the third C uh, will be a uh, four point four percent. So this is the one where you can categorize your. Uh, your your parts uh, or your inventories uh, on the shop floor. So in this case, you can you can you know start to make some of the policies or make some of the decisions based on where are, what are the important you know parts that you need you know pay more attention to their inventory control. Um, so so to avoid any potential issues. All right. Next, let's look at one uh, example uh, of uh, of we're gonna discuss different you know different inventory models. Uh, the most simple one it will be the single period inventory model. Uh, uh, this is the one example. And say assume that a mean of ninety papers and a standard deviation of ten papers. Right. For example, someone is selling papers, uh, or selling newspapers. Um, so I mean we have this ninety ninety papers and the standard deviation is ten papers. Assume that if we want an eighty percent chance of not running out, right? Uh, so eighty percent chance is given to you. So this is the most here we call it actually the service level, right? It's the probability. It's the probability eighty percent that is not running out. Assume that probability distribution uh, associated with sale is normal distribution. So we can have the line here. This is a normal distribution, um, and the stocking ninety papers yields a fifty percent chance of stocking out. So basically, ninety is our mu, right? It's our mean. It's the mean of this uh, normal distribution. Now it is asking how many newspapers should be uh, uh, prepared or should he prepare. All right. Uh, now, if 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 we want an eighty percent of chance that's not running out, means that we need to fill this whole normal distribution by eighty percent, right? So the the whole normal normal distribution uh, under this line is one hundred percent, right? So under this line, the whole line is one hundred percent. Now we need to find eighty percent. Eighty percent is right here, right? It's eighty percent. All right, and um, we all know normal, normal, normal distribution. So in order to find out what is this position, right? What is this position, or what is this point? Mainly, we just need to find out. Okay, how many, right? How many standard deviations it actually move out from the mean? So which is z times sigma. So z times sigma means how many standard these standard deviations it move it moves out from the mean, right? All right, and this point will be the mean, the the mean plus the how many standard deviation move out from the mean, right? Away from the mean. All right, so this is in this case eighty percent. We can find out uh, that eighty percent actually yields to uh, uh, if we find out uh, the, the, we know the probability we can find the z. The probability of eighty percent is is actually point eight five standard deviation. So z is Point eight five, okay. Standard deviation. Uh, you can either use normal distribution table or you can use Excel. If you use Excel, you probably get a similar number, but it's maybe a little bit different. Uh, it's point eight four one six two, right? Well, in this case, um, uh, you, you can you can find out what is how many newspapers should be prepared. It should be mu, which is ninety plus 
z times sigma, right? 0.84. This this uh, normal distribution, uh, you know, the value from the normal distribution table times time standard deviation. We know the standard deviation is 10. So we then we add it up all together. It's probably 99. Uh, uh, it's 99 uh, newspapers. So if he prepared that 99 newspapers, then he has a, a, a 80% chance that it's not ranking, running, running out, right? Not running out. If he only play, uh, if he only prepares 90 newspapers, he, he will have a how many, how many, how much chance? 50% chance, right? 50% chance of not running out. All right. Um, so now uh, we just uh, discussed uh, dis discuss about the single period inventory system. Now, what about multiple periods? So we have to order the, in the, the inventory in multiple times, right? Not just one time. It has to be today, maybe tomorrow, maybe this, this week, next week, this month, next week, this year, next year, uh, and multiple years. Um, so in this case, how do we how do we uh, make our plan for, for for the inventory control? All right, it's a, a um, so ordering of the inventory really depends on uh, there are two different types of those uh, or two I'll, I'll call it simple types of, of models. So one is fixed order quantity, the other one is fixed time period. So fixed order quantity means so every time I order the same amount. Right. So every time I, I, I order the same amount, uh, when uh, when uh, when it's time for me to order, or when it's uh, you know when well, when my all when, when my inventory level goes to down a certain level, then I'll I'll order the same amount. Always if I order one thousand, next time one thousand, next time one thousand. All right. So this is a Q model. It's called um, a fixed order quantity model, and another one is a P model, which is a fixed time period model. So fixed time period means you know regardless how much or how many inventory I left you know at a certain time you know once it reaches a certain time I will I will place the order right I'll place the order of order more for example I'm always ordering inventory at last uh, last day of the month right so January thirty first I'll place my order. I'll review my inventory and then you know I'll replace my order. Um, it will be of course different, different, different quantity though, right? And then uh, February, February twenty eight or twenty nine, right? You, I'll, I'll look at my 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 inventory level and then I'll place my order. It will will be a different quantity. Then same, you know March, March thirty first, I'll place another order. So this is a fixed time uh, period. Right, compared to the fixed order quantity, or is the difference is that fixed order quantity always the same quantity, and uh, fixed time period is always the same time. All right, now after we uh, understand the difference between the two different models, let's start with uh, first with uh, let's start with fixed order quantity uh, model. All right, so this is uh, this is the graph. It kind of shows that uh, how your inventory goes down um, and you know over time, right? So for example, this is the deliver time, and in, and in this time, it, the your your order is delivered. So you have a full quantity of uh, uh, of inventory, right? With time going on, what happens is that it will start to get lower, 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 get lower, lower, and and we'll go down here, right? So when when it goes down here, what happens is that it reaches our reorder, right? Reorder point, right? Reorder point. So reorder point means once the inventory goes to a, goes down to a certain level to a point, I'll start to make another order. I'll make make a start to make another order. So this is a reorder point. And at this point, what happens is I'll place the order and then wait and wait for the order to get in, right? But there's always a lead time for the order, right? During this lead time, I do not have any products. I do not have any, you know, materials. So in this case, what happens is that you need to prepare a certain, that's why we prepare a certain safety stock right certain safety stock
safety stock. We prepare certain uh, safety stock. And then when the order you know arrives, what happens is that it will, it will repeat the cycle and then keep going down and then uh, reach another reorder point and then uh, you know uh, wait for the, another order to fill. All right, so for this, we uh, in order for, for us to find out you know what is uh, uh, what is economic order quantity, we basically we use. Uh, total annual cost because this is how much we gonna pay right for the all the materials cost right all the all the inventory cost how the total annual cost equals to what equals to DC D is the uh, annual demand how many parts how much inventory do we need over the whole year right over the whole year and C means the cost per unit cost per unit so you know, uh, um, if we know the cost per unit and we know the demand, so basically this is the this is the raw material cost, right? This this is the parts cost, right? Unit cost. All right, and next part is we we know the materials. It will cost money, and also there is uh, some money that is uh, related to processing the orders. Right, so we call it setup cost. Right, so setup cost. So S is a setup cost. So it's placing the orders, and how how often does this cost? Is every time you place an order, right? And regardless how many uh, parts you order, uh, every time you place the order, there's a processing cost. If you if you, if you order ten times a week, then a it will be ten times of the setup cost, right? If you only order one time of the whole year, then that is only one time of less, right? All right. So how do we know how much time, how how many times we place the orders? We simply use D, which is annual demand, divided by Q, the order quantity. So we know the total demand of the whole year, and then we divide it by each time how much how inventory do we order. What is quantity that we order, right? Then we can we, we can know that how many times we actually place our order. So D divided by Q is how many times we place orders during the whole year. All right, so this is the setup cost, and the last part will be well, it will be the holding cost, right? Which is uh, holding the inventory on the shop floor, uh, but. How do we calculate this holding cost? Here we use an average. We use an average, right, from the beginning of the queue, which is the full inventory, to the end of when there's no inventory at all, right. So we uh, we use Q divided by two to find this is the average, average inventory, you know, throughout the year. So there will be sometimes it's above it, sometimes it's uh, below it, but in average it's uh, div uh, Q divided by two times uh, uh, times H, right? Holding cost. All right. So uh, when we know that this is the equation for calculating the total annual cost of uh, of ordering these parts throughout the year, but how do we find out, right? How do we find out the the, the the most economic quantity that 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 that, that results into the, the least value of TC, right? So in this case, if we on TC, uh, we know that there are uh, there is actually only one only one variable left in this uh, in this equation, which is Q, right? We don't know Q. We don't know Q. We know D. We know C. We know D. We know we, we know S. We know H. Right? These are all the all the numbers that we are uh, we already know, but we do not know the Q. In this case, if we only have one variable, and in, in the equation we can use derivatives, right, to find out what is the minimized value of the Q. What is the Q? Sorry, what is the Q uh, of the quantity that minimizes the the TC value, right? So in order for us to uh, uh, to use this model, actually there are some of the uh, conditions or assumptions 
uh, right? Because when we were explaining, when I was explaining this, you probably have already figured out. Uh, first, the demand for the product has to be a, a constant, right? And this always means there's always demand out there, right? So uh, not not like okay, next month we do not have demand at all, and then you know half the, the second half of the year the demand is going down or up. So we have to. Uh, this is a, one of the assumptions that uh, you know for the uh, fixed order quantity model. So it has to be constant and uniform, and also the lead time has to be uh, constant, right? Uh, for, you know, which is you know from ordering the material when to the time when we receive them. So the unit uh, product, the unit of the product, it has to be constant. I mean, the product here means our our the raw material we are ordering, right? And the inventory holding cost has to be, you know, it's an average uh, inventory. As I, as I discussed before, you know, it's, it, it, the, the inventory of that material is actually always changing because it's being used and used and also, you know, uh, refilled. So that it has to be an average value. And also the ordering and the setup cost has to be, you know, constant, always the same. And all demand for the product will be uh, satisfied. Right? So if they're saying, hey, so the lead time is longer, or lower, or or it's not uh, this this order is not uh, is not uh, filled, then means it does not fit this uh, uh, fixed order quantity uh, model. So you can tell uh, the fixed order quantity model is actually very um, it's an ideal uh, model that is you know is 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 it, it based on a lot of assumptions. So only when you have those equations, have those conditions, you can use this model. Or sometimes, you know, if they, you can give a rough number of that, uh, you can also use this number to give you a general idea what, what is the quantity range that you need for your order. All right, now um, I'll continue uh, our, you know, how do we minimize the, uh, the TC value, right? So we can see that TC equals to a, uh, D times C plus D divided by Q times S plus DQ divided by two times uh, uh, times H. So there are ordering cost, uh, material sorry, material cost, uh, or setup cost, or ordering cost, and also the holding cost. And for each one, you can see the line is going up or down, right? So the DC, the annual cost items, is always constant because you know because what because it is material cost, right? It's always there. Um, and also the holding cost will go up the more you hold it, right? The uh, the the more cost you're gonna have. Then the ordering cost will be the more you order each time, actually the less of the ordering cost you will you will uh, result in, right? So you can see the uh, there are, there's a, there's a blue there's a blue line, red line, and also the the black line. All these lines you know composes the whole total cost. And when we look at those, it actually the, the, the total holding cost is, uh, the, is the green line, right? So the green line, all we need to do is to find out this, this bottom, find out this bottom. How do we find out bottom? bottom? We, we, uh, I, I talked about that before, we can use derivatives to, uh, to find that. All right, uh, use derivative to find that, we, can, we get this equation, uh, and then uh, use this equation times the, the equals to uh, zero, Right, it was zero. Then we can get this, this final uh, formula, which is Q uh, or E O Q. Sometimes they call it the E O Q. Right, uh, economic order quantity equals to square root two d s divided by h two times the demand times the setup cost divided by h the holding cost. So if we know these three variables values, we can we can find out what is uh, the 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 EOQ, what is the uh, um, uh, economic order quantity. We do not need to do this derivative anymore. We just simply use this equation to find out find that out. All right, now let's look at one example. Um, so. Uh, the annual demand is 1,000 units, and the average daily demand is 2.74 units uh, per day, okay? The ordering cost is five per, uh, per order. That is the setup cost, right? And also holding cost means uh, uh, it's 1.25 per unit per year. If you hold it per year, it is 1.25 per unit. And, and the leading, leading time is, lead, or lead, lead time is five days, and the cost per unit is 12.5. Right, so this is, we know the we basically we know all of those 
uh, uh, variables, values. Then we just need to find out what is the uh, economic order quantity, right? So we use that equation and then find out that uh, uq or the q uh, equals to uh, 89.44, so basically 90 uh, units, right? All right, we, we know this. Now let's look at what is our reorder, uh, reorder uh, or safety stop or reorder uh, point, right? So reorder point means uh, when it reaches a certain point, we'll, we'll start to make, we'll start to order and, and then wait a lead time until, until what? Until it's arrived. So during, so basically this is uh, how much material that is needed during the lead time, okay? All right. So R equals to D average, which is daily demand, which is 2.74 units times five days. Right, five days. So this is what we got is thirteen point seven uh, units, and then we can we can we can calculate what is the total annual cost uh, equals to DC plus D divided by Q times S divided by plus Q divided by two times uh, times H. Then we can calculate is actually uh, this amount, right? Because you already know what is the uh, UQ, and then you just use this UQ in this equation to find out the total annual cost. So this is an example of using uh, economic order quantity to determine what is the quantity uh, you need to order in order to minimize the total annual cost of materials. All right, so we discussed about a safety stock and then said, oh, we just need to weigh that during the lead time um, and uh, during the lead time that how much, uh, how much demand is, the, is needed, right? Uh, but also there's a probability in there because there are always variations. Uh, remember in the very uh, first example, we talk about newspapers and uh, there's a certain service level. Do we want to make sure that we, we, uh, we are 90% not stocking out or 80% not stocking out or 50% not stocking out? So basically, we also need to use that probability in uh, determining our safety stock. Right, or the reorder point. So basically, reorder point equals to uh, uh, DL. So DL here means with this what? This is will be the if we look at the normal distribution. So this is the, will be the DL, right? This is a, D is the average daily demand times L. So this is our our uh, this is the mu, right? And then we want to find out at a certain probability or service level, what is this, uh, you know, what is the amount? So basically we need to find out, okay, Z, right? Z is uh, how many standard deviations or number standard deviations in movement from the mean. And the QL, but sorry, uh, the sigma level uh, L will be the standard deviation, right? Standard deviation what? It's the standard deviation of the usage during the lead time, right? During the lead time. Make sure that this lead time should be the same as this lead time. Okay, so we see. So this is how we uh, how we determine the reorder point for uh, you know for uh, with uh, with safety stock. All right, now let's look at one uh, example here. So it says that daily demand for a certain product is normally distributed with a mean of sixty and a standard deviation of seven. Right. Um, and the source of supply is reliable and maintains a constant lead time of six days. Okay, constant lead time of six days. L is equals to L equals to six, and the cost of placing the order is ten dollars. So S equals to uh, uh, ten dollars, and annual holding costs are 0.5 per unit. So you know holding cost H H is 0.5, and there are no stock uh, stock costs. Uh, um, and field orders are filled as soon as the order arrives. Assume sales occur over the entire 365 days of the year. So these are talking about it fits the economic order quantity model, right? All right, so now it asks us to find the order quantity and reorder point to satisfy a 95% probability of not stocking out during the lead time, all right? First, we know we know all the other uh, information like uh, the, the the material cost, you know the 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 uh, the setup cost, the holding cost. Then we can easily calculate the EOQ, right? D 
is a total total uh, total demand. We know we know the daily demand. I think we know the daily demand is about sixty, right? No, uh, then how many days of the year? So I calculate what is the daily demand, um, and then what is the setup cost? Setup cost is ten dollars. Place in order. And then divided by the uh, H, the holding cost. Then we get this. All right. Now we need to find out the uh, the reorder point. So how do we find the reorder point? Right. Remember, we need this normal distribution, and this is the DL. Okay. So DL, D. We know that steady daily demand is a uh, is uh, is, uh, is what is uh, sixty, and then L. L is what the lead time. And lead time is uh, let me find where is uh, lead. Okay, lead time is six days, right? We know day per day, and also the six days, right? We can calculate what is the mean. All right. Now we know the mean. All we need to do to find out is is what is z times sigma, right? Sigma L. All right. We know z. Z is we know it's ninety five percent probability, and we can we can easily find this Z number from normal distribution table or from Excel. You can calculate that yourself. And then we just need to find out the sigma L. Uh, sigma L is what we we we, we see the standard deviation is seven, but keep in mind that this standard deviation is for what? It's for daily demand. It's for daily demand. It's not for this L. Right, so lead time is six days, but daily demand is the standard deviation seven. Does not mean that six days the lead time standard deviation standard deviation is seven. Right, can you understand this? This is day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six. Okay. So the mean is okay. For one day is normal one dom normal distribution. For one day is one normal distribution. These are all normal distributions. And this is sigma one, sigma two, sigma three, sigma four, sigma five, sigma six. Now we need to find out what is the sigma during this all these six days. Right? Is it the same as sigma one, two, three, four? No, it's not the same, right? You have to calculate, right? You have to calculate what is the sigma for this, you know, six periods of time, okay? So in this case, how do we calculate? We use this equation. So basically, we we say that sigma one squared plus sigma two squared plus sigma three squared plus sigma sigma four squared. Plus sigma five squared plus sigma six squared equals to this sigma, right? Sigma L. Sigma L squared. So this is a uh, this is logic that uh, uh, for the for this equation, right? Because for each day it's the same, right? Because daily demand. The standard deviation is seven. So the cube of sigma one in this case sigma one equals to sigma two equals to sigma three and then equals to you know four five six, right? So that's why this will be the six, right? Sigma. This is the daily, daily, right? Daily squared equals to sigma l squared. Sigma l squared. And L equals to six, right? So this is how you find out this value, sigma L's uh, standard deviation. And then we can calculate what is the uh, reorder point, which which is to use uh, daily demand times the uh, standard so times the uh, lead time, uh, six day times six plus right plus Z. We know the Z is one point six four because it's ninety five percent probability times. Uh, seventeen point one five, which is the uh, standard deviation of the six periods. Okay, so this is how we find out the uh, the reorder point.
All right, next, let's look at uh, another model, which is a fixed time period model. So compare, uh, compared to fixed quantity, uh, period, uh, fixed quantity model here, the fixed time period model means I always, you know, review our, our inventory at a certain time, right? So the graph will show like this. Um, for example, we have a certain, uh, certain order, a certain inventory level on hand, and then we'll start to, you know, decrease, and then, uh, when it reaches the time, when it reaches this time, regardless, excuse me, regardless how much inventory I still have on the shop floor, I still gonna place that order because it's time, right? This is called fixed time period model. All right, well, how much order should I, should I place, right? What is the order, how much inventory should I, should I place? It equals to what? Look at this here, right? So from from this point, when I when I place an order, the order will arrive what arrive here, right? At this time, right after lead time, after lead time. So this is this order. But we cannot get our next order until until what? Until this time. So it means we cannot get our next order filled or arrived until this time. So we are, when we are placing order, we want to make sure during the, the T plus L periods, this period and this period, right? During these two periods that I always have products, I always have inventory, right? So this is uh, why we use D times T plus L. Use D times plus, uh, T plus L. And then, of course, uh, there is a safety stock we, we need to, uh, you know, prepare. So that's why it's a Z time, times sigma T plus L. And also minus I. So I, minus I means here we assume what? Here we assume our inventory is, is, is zero, right? Here we assume our inventory is zero. But is it our zero? Not exactly. Maybe, maybe not, right? So in this case, we need a minus i. I mean, i is what is the current inventory level we, we have, right? What is current inventory level? So this is how we calculate the fixed time period model quantity, how much uh, inventory should we order. All right, now let's look at another example to, uh, to, the, to demonstrate this. So the, dem the daily demand for a product is 10 units with a standard deviation of three units. The review period is certain days and the lead time is 14 days, okay, 14 days. And management has set up a policy of satisfying 98% of demand from items in stock. So we have a Z, which means we can find a Z for the uh, uh, service level, 98 server service level. At the beginning of this review period, there are 150 units in inventory. How many units should be ordered? Okay, we so we basically have uh, uh, most of the information here. Uh, we know I, we know Z, right? We know uh, the lead time. Lead time is uh, 14 days, and also review period is uh, 30 days. So uh, T is 30, and the lead time is uh, it's 14. So basically. If you want to find out how many units we order, basically you, we need to use this equation, right? Q uh, equals to D times the T plus L uh, plus the, you know, the safety stock minus the uh, current uh, inventory level. All right, so we, after we put all these numbers in, we only need to find out Z times sigma, which is the safety stock here, right? All right, Z, we know we can find out Z for 0.98 is 2.05. Uh, now it is only find out the Q, the, the sigma, sigma. So we talk about how to find the standard deviation for a certain period. Uh, then we just need to uh, uh, use that, you know, that equation to find out the sigma for T plus L. Uh, because we already know the daily, right? We know the daily standard deviation is three units. How many days T plus L? Then we can easily find the standard deviation. Um, this is how we find out that value and the Q finally equals to uh, 331. So this is uh, how to solve fixed time period model uh, questions or problems. 
All right. Now, lastly, we're gonna talk about another model, which is a price break model. Because you know, uh, for example, like then in this case, uh, the annual demand is uh, ten thousand dollar, ten ten thousand uh, uh, items or units, and ordering cost or setup cost is twenty dollars per order, right? And the interest carrying cost is the twenty percent of the what? Twenty percent of of the unit cost. Right, twenty percent of unit. If, if, for example, if you are holding your uh, uh, televisions, right, uh, each television is about six hundred dollars. Then twenty percent of that, right. So, uh, you can calculate it's one hundred and fifty uh, dollars of uh of carrying cost of the whole year. So, and also it gives our cost per unit. Instead of cost per unit is always a cost, uh, same number, same value. Here, our supplier actually give us a price break. So if we order one to four hundred ninety nine, uh, the cost per unit is five dollars. If we order five hundred to nine hundred ninety nine, it's four point five dollars. Right? It's it's cheaper. Well, if we order more uh, a thousand uh, a thousand units or more. It's only three point nine dollars. That's that's pretty, uh, you know, uh, impressive uh, discount. All right, but we also do not want to uh, hold too much inventory on our shop floor because it will also you know lose money on that. Then in this case, how do we find the balance? How do we find out what is the most economic uh, order quantity for 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 uh, for my for my uh, company? Or you know, with with this item. All right, so now let's look at what really happens, right? What really happens, uh, in in this model. So we know that these are the basic information we we can use economic order quantity. So suppose, right? Suppose we gonna order, what we gonna order at the at the price of five dollars, right? Suppose if we order at the at the price of all five dollars, then I'm gonna calculate what is the uh, what is the uh, uh, economic order quantity, right? So if it is five dollars, then economic order quantity will be six hundred and thirty three. Now it comes the question that, okay, so so if we want to have five dollars of the cost per unit, we the most economic quantity we order has to be six hundred thirty three. It's actually bigger than four hundred ninety nine, right? Which means if we order six hundred thirty three, we are actually ordering the price of here, of the second one, right? So which means that lower point is not within within this model. It doesn't work, right? All right. Interesting. Now let's look. What what about if we order if we order at the price of four point five? What happens? Then we calculate another UOQ based on the price of four four point five. It's actually six hundred sixty seven. Well, in this case, six hundred sixty seven actually lies within five hundred to nine hundred ninety nine. So means for this one, the economic order quantity is within this range. Okay, so. For the first one, it is not in the in that range. Second one isn't in the in the range. How about the third one? Let's try. Okay, if we try a thousand or more, and with the price of three point nine, we get is seven sixteen. So which means this number is also not within the range of this price. Now, let's let's look at what what really happens here. We can we can see from this graph that, right? Let's see from this graph for each of the model, right? For each of the model with a different price, right? With five dollars, uh, with four point five dollars, with three point nine dollars, it has a certain line, right? It, so we can see the top line that is the uh, uh, economic order quantity model uh, with a price of five, and the middle line is uh, economic order quantity model with four point five dollars. And the la the low lowest line is a three point nine uh EOQ model, but it does not work all the time, right? It, it it's not always the full line. So only for that you know for this model, the only works is 
is at a certain period, which means if it is lower than 500, we, the model is actually the green part, right? The top green part, top green part. Only it goes to uh, 499. All right, from, from 500 to 999, it's the green part, which is uh, we're gonna use the second, right? Or the middle line, or the middle line, which are our second price break. Similarly, you know, if it is over 999, then we're gonna use the third part of the price break, which is use the third line, right? Which is that. So, so in this case, we can, we can see clearly that in, in the you know, price break model, we are only using a segment all right, only using a segment of each each EOQ model. All right, so in this case, we need to, we know the green line is actually the model. We all we need to find out is okay, what is the point that is results into the lowest annual cost, right? Results into the lowest annual cost. Well, in this case, we can see that. Because, because of what? Because the UQ model, the UQ point is lies in here, right? It, here it always, it always lower than the first segment, right? And then another point I want to look at is this point, right? Which has its price break, it's at 1,000, 1,000. Okay, because one side we are using a third line, but right now we do not know if this point is lower or this point is lower. We have to make a comparison and to find out. So all we need to do is to is to what? Is to find the total annual cost with these price, with, with, with the two points. Find the total annual cost with two points. Well, if you want to be more careful, you can you can also find the find this point. Find this point's total annual cost and make comparison. You will see it's actually always uh, always higher than, than than this point. But if you want to be careful and or make it easy, uh, you can always find the three price break points at total annual cost and then compare. Right? These are price breaking. So the reason we are comparing these three points is because right. The the other two the other two what this one. And this one, the EOQ points are not within, are not within the lines, the, 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 the green lines, right? So that's why the key points are these three red points. So we compare those three annual costs and then we calculate what, what are they, what, well, uh, how, how much they are. And then after we calculate that, we can find out the total annual cost for 667 or 666. Um, it's uh, it's this cost, and the total annual cost for the one thousand is uh, this cost. So you can see that if we order one thousand, it actually results into less total annual cost. So this is uh, in this case we order you know uh, uh, order one thousand. So this is how we uh, deal with price break problems. Right? This is how we deal with price break problems. First, to find out what are the valid, you know, segments of those uh, by, by calculating the EOQs for, uh, for each of the line, each of the lines, at each of the, you know, price, uh, price, price model. And then compare those, you know, three uh, or more key price, uh, key points uh, of the model and then compare the total annual cost. All right, so the fixed time period of the model uh, it really, you know, it varies. It varies with the size, and this is how we how we find out, you know, the lowest cost to calculate the order quantity for each of the price and see if the quantity is feasible. Uh, and then you can sort the prices from lowest to highest and calculate the order quantity for each price until the feasible order quantity is found. Right? If the first feasible order quantity is the lowest uh, uh, price, this is the best. Otherwise, you can calculate the total cost for the first feasible quantity and calculate the total cost at each price lower than the first feasible order quantity. Well, it might sound confusing. Well, the easy way is you just calculate all of the all of the uh, order quantity uh, uh, EOQs and then compare uh, if they are within the 
if they are valid, then compare those. If they are not valid, then find the price break and compare the annual cost. All right, so that's all for uh, today. So basically, we discussed about what are inventories and the basics about inventory, like purposes or the costs related to them, and also how to categorize inventories uh, using different classification systems. And then we discussed different you know, control models, uh, single period control model, right? And also in the newspaper uh, example, and also money period uh, inventory uh, model, right? fixed order quantity, safety stock, fixed time order quantity, and also press break models. Um, so you can use those models in your in the applications. You know, if you in the future you are working in the product production production companies, you know, think about how to use those uh, in uh, in your work and about make sure that you know what are the conditions, what are the assumptions that you need to have in order to use the models. It's not always that one model fits all these situations.